Okay, so today I want to switch from the engine for a little bit uh, because I'm kind of thinking of reworking how I do the Vulcan mini libraries. Specifically, like, currently to keep things kind of easy, I've just built a new version of, like, the headers with different versions for literally every version of the headers from version 90 up to current 187. I want to see if I can try to like combine all these to like a single header that's modified over time. So that even if you, uh, so you can like use a newer, ver newer version of the header on older versions and then, then do the same thing for the other types. Cause these are getting a bit long in the tooth I, or it's just not really nice. I don't really like it. I'm not entirely satisfied with it. So, of course, comes the idea of, well, let's try to do better. So, what is going to be the first thing I'm going to do? Right now, I have version, I, I'm i pretty sure I made this, at least the VK value serialization, pretty compatible across the different uh, versions. Because I don't think there's anything Vulcan specific in here. Like, at all. I think it's just strings and ints. So this should be, like, reusable both backwards and forwards. And I'm not entirely sure why I... Like, yeah, it's just... Hmm. Yeah, it should be. Uh, I mean, of course, i got the string views and stuff. Maybe I can, like get rid of those and change up to do something along the lines of maybe go more C go more to the C side but I'm not entirely sure on that Hmm. Hmm. So that'd be the first thing. Let's see if I can get uh, this to just to, like be a single header like this and not get rid of this switch thing. So first of all, of course, make sure it works. Right now it works great. Okay, let's say... 199, we go down to, let's say, version 90. We say that's 186. Go to this. We say, hey, this is compatible with 186. Yeah, that seems to be fine. I mean, it won't have as many values, for sure. But I prefer to have newer versions anyways. What I would want to do, though, is change it so, like, it's equal to or less than. Because if it's if it, if you have a version of the header that's newer, you, of course, need the newer version for newer flags and options and enums. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay. So, that'd be something to do here. Or change this up. Okay, value serialization, int end. So we just only want to run that, on, this on the very last version. If. Okay. If that, then. If I, we don't want to do that, but we'll, instead we want to do this. BK value serialization, HPP, we scrap that. That's up by one. This is, this is the last one, equal to the end. 
Okay. And then we want to modify by serialization. So when we say like static assert this, it has to be less than or equal to the current version. That should basically scrap an entire directory of these things, which is a fairly a fair number, I believe. Six megabytes worth of, and I can maybe squeeze it down into detail value. Fifty-six. Yeah. Okay. Twelve to fifty-six kilo. Mm hmm. Uh, sorry, CP, VK, star, or that backwards. Okay. Generate. Generate for all of them. Yes, go on through. That's great. So we didn't, we created that, but this is nothing, nothing at all. That didn't work at all. Hmm. We're moving backwards. Cat that into that. Okay, that's fine. But it's supposed to be overwritten here. Serialization. Do I. S mm. Let me exit out here. Oh, it's up to 188 now. And I don't actually specify the end. Okay. Okay, first round is always going to be the highest. First equal one. So if first equal one, this is the highest that we're doing. Because if I do, let's say 180, right? Yeah, okay. So we're instead, we're going to go off the first. First equal one, we're serializing, and we exit out. Oh, sorry. Mm hmm. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. Uh, I don't know why I didn't do this in the first place. It only takes like a year and a half of just kind of using the old system and then realize one day, oh, you know, why? Um, okay. We don't need that. We can get rid of this serialization. We can get rid of this one. Then get rid of string parsing, serialization. Cancel those. Great. I do. Am I doing tests and examples? Yes. Okay.
Uh, generate going to end at 187, so it matches what we have previously. I don't actually need to specify that anymore, do I? A specific version? Not really. Um, so we'll get rid of that. Right. If then end at the end, we get rid of that. And we don't exit on the end either now. So pause while that happens. All right, with that one done, let's see how that goes. So that, this should, mm, okay, get rid of the 188s, that makes sense. Uh, get rid of these files I accidentally generated in the wrong directory. Now what we've got is a bunch of deletes, a modification for that one. And I think, where is the file? Where's the one file I'm generating? As a CPP, where's the HPP? Detail. Where's the, where's this file? I accidentally overrode it. Good, great, great. Rerun. No, 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 no. I see what's going on. It's slowly decreasing. Uh, whoops. What I need, yeah, first equal that and then first equal zero. Right. It stays at 187. Great. Now let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, so that's actually looking pretty good, pretty snazzy. I like it. It's first serialization, and then this. This is a separate branch. Good. Okay, I can probably commit this. And then this will just in, uh, get new items in it as time progresses. So that should be fine. Um, what do I say for a description of this? Consolidated. Actually, hold on. I mean, I, I do want to do this, but I'm also like, okay, you know what? Specifically,
older versions of Vulcan and the Okay, we'll just say that. I'm actually, I should uh, double check to see if, put that up. I need, I want, I want to see if there's actually a version where like they, there are items that have been removed. So compare, that's like for compare and compare with selected. Um, Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. That that that's gonna really. Ah. Uh, yeah. That's really gonna put a dampener on this. There are. Uh, if I want to keep this backwards compatible, I'm actually going to do more. Because there are like old versions, like version 90 had NVX, version 91 has NV. If I want to keep it backwards compatible, I need to support basically both. Like I need to have this and this. I... No, 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 no. Okay, so my knee-jerk attempt to do this failed horribly. Horribly. Select for compare, compare with selected. I mean, there's going to be like a whole bunch of items that have been removed, right? Like this one. This call mode flag that sets has been just kind of moved all the way down there instead. Okay. Hmm. Moved around. Okay, I can work with that. Yeah, there's some items that have been removed in the meantime. 32 and 33. 31, 32. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, so this is why I had, um, okay. Okay, I need it. I need a, I need to go off. I'm, I'm going to pace around my place a bit, little bit, and I'm going to think of a new way to do this because that rework is not going to work. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, basically I have to scrap the old stuff. Like this is all based around the idea of doing individual headers or uh, yeah, using data from each specific Vulkan XML. If I want to like be able to consolidate them all together into one file, I need to kind of rework how I'm doing this. I'm going to have to process each of the XMLs of the range that I care about and then like put them into like a set of working files that like uh, I update throughout the entire course of basically the Vulcan history and then at the end generate these header files. I'm not going to try to do something where I try to do it in memory or anything like that. That's a bit much from my mind right now. But what I can do, and I'm going to be switching over to Python for this, and I've already got a little, a little bit of a, a base here to work with, is basically what I'm going to do. It's going to be a two-phase kind of thing. First phase is going through all the XMLs, gathering the data, putting them into intermediate uh, working files, and then at the end, parsing those working files and generating the final header. 
So to start with, of course, I need to do the phase one thing, which is the parsing the VK doc. And I already got the bait, like I said, I already got the basics here. So I need to start going through and doing the same things I had previously. So uh, one of the first things I need to do is figure out the header version, because right now that's just nothing. So <clears throat> let us do that. like a null or a zero or, or what uh, I guess there's Python null none type yeah okay no we'll just do it inside the scope so the registry node I need to define I need to figure out and I'm using XML to dict obviously so first of all, yes, the version, the version, the version, version. So I need to go through all the types nodes and then the type under that to find, okay. Let's see how this works. Not well at all, apparently. Registry node. Yeah, okay. Save it, then go. Comment, type, comment. Okay, so that's the thing that's in this specific types node, right? Types. Here. So that comment type, okay. Okay, so I need to go through like type like this instead. It's for type in that. Hmm. So an attribute is okay if at name, let's say let's try that. Okay, okay, okay. Not too bad. Python has key. How do I de determine that? Was removed in Python 3. Python dictionary has key. Check if key exists. Come on. If, okay. If at name in the dictionary, then we say print type at name like that. I'm just learning, relearning Python as is right now. Okay, okay. That's not too bad. So what do we want to do? We want to go all the way down to wherever 90 is. Because that's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to find the version number. Uh, we're going to go down to category. Okay. If at category. And type. At category 
equals define. Then I want to print that out. Print. I just print type. Is that just a little bit much? In type and type that. Hmm. Hmm, this is kind of a difficult thing to do. I just need to get to, like the last word. Maybe do I need to do cat no, I don't need to do I do if at name is it name? At name? No, it's not name. If name in type and type name equals BK header version. Then, okay. I need the text. Print type dot. Hash text. Is that how this works? Okay, I need to get the last word. Python get last word. Get last word. Last word from a string says split. Based on spaces, to find ninety. Okay, and get then I need to get the last thing. Okay, sure. String equals that. Split string this, which is split string dot length minus one. Then I need to say, hey, you know. length size list size negative indexing works does it yes it does apparently okay so we got version great Vendors. Now I need to go through the vendor list. Define working directory.
Put back, look up vendors. We want to go through tags. Print tag. Or is it ta tags tag? Whoops. drink brb okay so what was i uh vendor tags right i can read tags what was i going to do i was okay for the intermediate file do i want to do like xml as well or i mean i can already read it pretty easily in here or do i want to do something simpler some other format like what vendor tags is just used it's just a Perhaps something even simpler, like a CSV file. It would also depend on, like, how am I doing other items, wouldn't it? Hmm. Like, the first, what would... Hmm. What if the first line was a thing that okay maybe i can hmm what if okay let's okay let's say i got tags how do i put this out is there an easy way to do this let's say i create a new dict Dictionary. How do I create a new dictionary? New dictionary. Empty dict. Okay. For each tag, uh, all I'm doing is adding that, right? So for vendors. Vendors tag at name. Or would it even be that? Would it be like a list? For each one of these vendors who put that in, and we can say like equals what? Add author tag. Something like that. And then if I print vendors, is that okay? Okay, almost. We'd have to have something like Let's say I have a vendors. Let's say I have it parsed from earlier, from somewhere else. I have like an intermediate file that I've read it in from. So what, I, what, what, would, it, what, would, ah, what would it look like? It would look like I'd have two things. I'd have like first scene, last scene, something like that. Um, if... in vendors then I'd be doing something else previously else we're creating a new one ah, nope not quite it's not going to be that it's going to be like what first equals version, last equals version, 
And that's what it's going to look like, right? Mm. It's like a Python struct. Mm, not really. How do I do this? No, dictionary pre Python. some kind of struct like thing or okay so what I want to do is like the first and last version that it was seen nope maybe mm -hmm. okay Otherwise, uh, vendors. So let's say we have a dictionary, and we already have you know vendors. AMD equals you know twenty and twenty-five, and then we want to do this thing. Where are we going to say like vendors? Tag at name equals or not that, but first or sorry, last scene. It was last scene this version. Something like that. Hmm? So here we go, first, last. Okay, there we go, that's looking better. So we go through the versions, we found it, it's great. Okay. Hmm. Dictionary. That's put into a file. How do I get, how do I do this with this? H how XML to XML to dict for, how do I put it to file? XML to dict on par okay. Uh unparse to that of vendors. Document must have exactly one root. Okay. What? Right. Yes. Um. Uh, new dictionary.
Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, and if okay, and then if um, how do I s put that to file then? Right to file. F dot write that. Okay, hold on. F That's not a pen though. making it super easy to parse for next time. If I just bring this back in, it'll be just those. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now do I want to, maybe if it's not a working direct uh, directory if it's just a working file and I just modify that working file. I read the file in, I parse, I add the stuff and I rewrite the file and then I do that for each iteration. Slowly you know, adding more and more stuff as can be seen. And then at the end take that file and basically parse it much like I did previously. That sounds all right to me. The process vendors. So what I'd have to do is I'd have to Okay, so I need hmm. If I'd have to do it out here, I'd like have a dictionary root. Turn vendors.
Okay, so it'll be what? Working. It's not working directory anymore. It's working file. Out file. Um. It's just W. It's not working dir. It's a working file. It's a working file. We got that. Parsing options. Okay. Uh, w. Oh, yeah. No working spot. What? Oh. Okay, rather than that. Rather than having a working directory and having a multitude of items inside of that, I'm just going to use XML really oddly, in a real personal fashion. It's going to be disgusting, but it'll work to my mind. To my mind. We got vendors, that's great. Okay, we're going to see if input file. Okay, let's. Hmm. Data equals dictionary. We'll do this where data equals file descriptor dot feed. And that's it. Then we kind of exit out. Then we do this doc equals that. If, okay, with, if not, if file not found. Try with, except. Oh. 
Okay. That's fine. We can go without that one. But if try that. Or. I can work with that. I can work with that. Data, that. If not data um, root in data, data root equals dict. New dictionary, okay, we make sure that that exists, even if the file doesn't exist. Just going to be a good thing here. If uh, vendors in data root, then we use that else. It's a new dictionary. Line 53, okay, if okay, I need to have a try. Oh, it's expecting it to be Okay, then we read it in, then we kind of go through these. Okay, so we do this. Great. We have intermediate. And then we go to, we, we um, Morgan Docs, we're gonna git checkout main. It's gonna be very, very recent. We're gonna rerun this. There's got to be some new ones at the end. Yes, there are. Perfect. I'm liking this already. Okay. Great progress. Check out 894. 211DE. Great. That didn't seem to do anything. That makes sense. It's supposed to go up in increasing order. Or, or hold on. Would it be increasing order or would it be decreasing order? Um, hmm. It's in decreasing order. Oof. Hmm. 
Okay, uh, I need to settle. Am I doing increasing or decreasing order? I have to, I have to figure that out now. It appears I'm doing decreasing order. Okay, let me think. That shouldn't really matter, should it? I can, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do decreasing order. I just need to re-figure uh, this out. Uh, vendors, that, okay. Yes, yes, it'll be first. Operating on decreasing versions. Okay. So first becomes version. Mm -hmm. We're also going to have a thing for that. If not. First, okay, we need to, yeah, we do need to kind of have static asserts, make sure with, we're within the uh, range that we're looking for. So first, in uh, data root, That equals that. It's last that we have to do. Like that, we have a first uh, root vendors, first and last for the entirety of everything. That makes sense. Work on the vendors list. Okay. Okay, I'm going to actually... You know what? I will. I'm actually going to run a list. I'm just going to run through all of them using that right now. So... I'm going to do this. We're going to continue after we run this. So continue. And what we're going to do, we're going to get checkout tag. It's going to be... Hold on, what? Okay. Back up in one directory, parse, okay, doc. The Python is going to be input, XML, working option, file is. It's going to be that. Generate. Do, do, okay. Let's see how this works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if we go down 105 ggp was added 105 90 90 90 109 162 164 167 178 180 okay 
All right. And that's the range we can operate in. Okay, I'm liking how this is starting to come together. So that's vendors. That's all that stuff. That's a lot of the little things I need to get done out of the way. Okay. Back to the working file. Next. I was primarily looking at doing this for serial, uh, serialization first, of course. So let's actually get what I have. Stage it so I don't lose it and go to value serialization. We've got that. We've got vendors. We've got platforms. How do we do platforms? Platforms is next, and we have a special thing in Parsex.ml for that. Same thing, basically, but platforms instead. Ah, uh, that's the wrong platforms. Just all platforms. So I'm looking for first note of platform and I need there you are. Can I pin this so I don't accidentally lose it? Yes. Okay. The whole word. Um, it just looks like it's a bunch of other things down here. Not really. Okay, yeah, yeah. These things, platform, Win32, and these are all based on the list at the top. So can I please just... Nintendo Vi? What are you? Must be in the Switch or something. platforms we're going to go if well we already we know it has an, a name oh no no if What do we bring in here? 
We have that and we have that. Okay, we need two things. Platforms name equal platform name is that we need the um, the definition or the guard this is the header this is the guard that's uses to switch what you can have equals platform at protect Okay, what have we got? What have we got? Platforms, xlib with these guards, perfect. Next, enum data. There are a number of them. How does this laid out? API constants, don't care. Well, maybe actually we do. Hmm, not really actually. Type enum. values there's a thing for bit flags right i swear yeah bit position bit mask type bit okay can i do a definition of okay if i go down to bit mask bit positions there should be like things for value of zero somewhere in here Yeah, like this one, right? Where's that directly? So I can probably swap between the two. I can do specifically enums and then specifically, okay. Because what's the data I'm looking for precisely? Let's also pin this. Um, let's get rid of this so I can actually... Like that. Okay. So you have the vendors, which are special list array up there at the top. Great. Enum value set. Then we get down. So we got enums we can do enum specifically and then we can do bit masks separately now hmm 
Hmm. Should be able to. Should be able to. Okay. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Registry node. If at enums type and enum at type equals enum specifically. not equal, then we'll continue. Otherwise, we carry on for this. Name equals enum at name. And then we're going to do name. How do I want to lay it out internally? Like what do I do about the values? Because I have value and I have name of that value. Like a list of values? Or it'd be the have those be the keys, those be the values. Um, I think that could work. Okay, let's do, let's do If name in e equals enums, then we, okay, else. This is the part where we say enums. Otherwise we say enums name. equals first last like that then we say something like type no 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 we'll actually set mm. we'll just leave it like this for the moment Do that, we say enums Didn't manage to get anything. Okay. Why? Oh. Hmm. 
Nope, still nothing. Okay, let's see what's going on in here. Okay, enums and t enums, interesting. Nine forty Oh, no, back up. None type is not iterable. If name, okay, if Skip those ones. Okay, that's not quite working out. Enums. Should have been an empty dictionary. Otherwise, yeah, okay. If I need to go back a few. Okay, roll back, roll back. That worked, right? This worked. No, it did not. What? What's going on? Empty that out. Run this. Okay, we've got a bunch of things like that. Great. API constants. If... Okay, and we're doing the other ones. So we got BK result. Yeah, okay. There's a bunch of things in there. We can do that later.
an empty dictionary of values. Do that. Like it won't apply to that. But it would be like that, yep. Values equals enum name values. Now we need to parse well, the values. Still have that. Okay, same thing we have the name, so that's becoming What do we do for value? Hmm. We'll, we'll parse it separately in a moment. If at value in this, What else can we have? Value, bit position, value. That doesn't even have, oh, there's alias. I need to deal with aliases as well. How do I deal with bit position when I do it? Parsing XML bit position. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have this. Line 61, I have an else that goes into this. Line 72. <laughs> Line 59 is not iterable. There's any num value without a name. Line sixty two. After this, I would need to reset it. that out fresh no name for enum value inside of this where is this give me okay that's a type okay Really? So it'll be here, right?
So I'm kind of, I've gotten through a number of, I've only gotten through like three or four. Okay, not much. Hmm. Let me say like enum set enum enum set if and enum set enum set name. This works, right? Great, we got a whole bunch of things. We've got enum data down here. First, last values. Okay. Through the enum values, which are, we're going through these things. Through the enum set. Is this it? Is this what was screwing me up? No. Values equals that. We're going through each enum in the set. Okay, reset this bit. I'm lost. Print these guys. Okay. Yes, we're going through this way. Layout. Okay, so we're on the first one. Layout general. That's great. Down to pre initialized. Fantastic. Okay, it's going through all of them. Okay. We do that, then we break. We just do one. Just just focus on one. If should always be the last state it was in, not the first state. Okay, yeah, if values name, if not, no, if name in values name, then we just say, hey, um, equals first, equals version. Else,
Okay. That's what we're doing. Doing one. We can't even do that. Why? Line 59. If name in values name. Is this not a dictionary or something like that? It should be an empty dictionary. Okay. Is this just not a dictionary? Am I just like fooling myself or something? This is a very real name. VK image layout undefined. If name in values. There we go. Now we come back through to line 58. String indices must be integers, really. So we went through to VK image layout and define store op. So VK component swizzle identity sampler occlusion transparent block graphics and we got this guy all by himself. What's with you? You're the one I crashed on last time as well. Mm-hmm. I, unless I crashed on this one instead. VK pipeline cache header version. No, we're, we're in here. We're just about to do this. And then this one just dies. Why? What's what's special about this one? Name equals enum name. Can I not read this? Understand it. Like if I was to just, uh, I don't know, do this, would then crash on that one instead. VK image view type. It would. So if it's, if there's only one, what? Okay. Printing them. Show, show me what's. Add value. That's it? That's all you have is add value? What happened to the name?
if there's only one, it's not even a dictionary. It's no, it is a dictionary. It's right there. It's that one. It's that one as a dictionary. Okay, um, okay. It is still an ordered dictionary. BK Bind Point Graphics One. Crap. Graphics compute, and if it's only the one, it's an array of one. Why is this one, two, three? Okay, yeah, no, I see what's going on. It's an array of ordered dictionaries, and if it's only one, then it okay, garbage, absolute garbage. Okay. I need to like. Mm. This is like a dictionary size. Okay, before I figure that, that out, I need to this name equals enum. So I need like the enum. The values. Do like a Python reference. Okay, so it'd be like values equals that. I'd have to return values. A lot of uh, passing stuff around. Ugh. Yuck.
list has no object that. Okay, it's a list. Um, Python list size. Length of that. Uh, or multi, 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 multi. It should be a single in here somewhere. VK pipeline bind point. Okay, hit this one. Never ever. Mm. It it never thinks. It, okay, Python is list. Yes, okay, finally. <sighs> finally, finally, finally. Okay, now I can actually start going. So, it right If none, hmm. Come in if none. There's always a nun somewhere. Where did this come from?
don't care about any non values. Why? 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 Am I? Oh, I got it the wrong way around, don't I? Values. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Back up. Back up. Okay. 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 We're here. Now I need to go through if I need to go through the different values. Name values and values um, first equals version. Um, need to pass that in. Otherwise. First, last. equals that and then we need to say okay if at value in enum equals what That value. Bit mask. Bit pause. Huzzah! Oh, version. Okay. Great. 
All right. Uh, I guess I'm just doing enums. Okay, we go to this point. This one, I have no enums to give it. So... Position. We got alias. Is that supposed to alias back to that? Just that value. Okay. Hmm. Okay. All uh, right. Is there anything else I really need for serialization? Okay, there's enum platforms. Oh no! Keeps going. But that's it. Platforms, enum data, platforms. Then we parse. Then we do the other, the flip side, where we're parsing it all out and trying to make sense of it all. Hmm. Python bit mask. Python bit shift. Okay. I'm going to take a quick break, a bit of a drink, and I'll be R a B. Okay, uh, just so first, one of the first things I need to figure out is how to get to uh, convert bit positions to like an actual value like this that I can work with. Um, so if I do bit uh, wise shift, okay, one, two, three, four, five. So this should be eight, right? Yeah, eight. If 
I ate so Python. Okay, I'm just going to do this real quick where I'm just going to do this and then exit return. So I want to do, what's it? We got 0b1. So print. By one. Return that. What's that come out with? False. Uh, hmm, that's probably not very useful, is it? Okay. Not very useful at all. Uh, okay. Python hexadecimal. Do it. Or is it like supposed to be bin like this? Bind or any shit like that. Zero B zero. That doesn't seem to do anything. <clears throat> Hexadecimal value of something. So we got an input. One, two, three. One, two, three. A, B, C. Okay. We'll then run the loop for um, one, two. Okay, you know what? Maybe not. Maybe I can still... If I just leave it as bit position like that, I could probably just deal with it. So we've got enums. Uh, okay, what was I doing? Platform. Enum platforms, right. Enum platforms. Okay. So this isn't really required for this one, I presume. I mean, for serialization, it doesn't really matter. Because these are all like separate or um, like I'm not actually using the VK values here. So I can actually use it across platforms without having to worry. Okay. Yes. Yes. Process these enums. If enum values is none equals an empty dictionary, okay? I'm going, I'm iterating through the enums. So it's actually iterating through the keys. Okay, so that should fix that up. Uh, 
go from 90 to 188. I should actually be able to move back further as well. This was introduced in 131. 9188 Hmm. Okay, I guess. Um, with all that out of the way, I guess now I actually get to try to parse. Now that I parsed it, now I need to generate the uh, header itself. So let's close that up. Close that up. Close it up. Whatever. What's it? Enum. Okay, generate. We're going to do this. Put that over here. Great. We're going to have this. Not quite this. This. We're going to have the first part of this. So. Got input, we got output. Great. Output file. So we want to read open the file. Dictionary, great XML to that of input file. Okay. So what are the first things we want to do? We'd have this, we'd have to do I need to open output file. Should I'd have oh okay, I also wanna uh, put that in. Writing, okay. Intermediate and dash O as far as PP.
I need to import these things again, of course. Okay. Tesla HPP is no. Is there like a. Like a right line? Or do I just want to. I'd have to do this one way or the other, so. Rather than have it all internally, we'll just do that. We got that. And if that. Mm hmm. Okay. Let's pin that. So start with that. We open the data, so we need to do a couple things. First, we want to make sure Static assert of PK header version is greater than or equal to data first. Data, oh, it'd be like data and then root. Okay, I can't do that. Okay, 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 okay. Mm, right lines? What was it? Right lines, right? Python, right lines. Python right lines file f dot right lines, and then to be an array of items. Okay. OK. 
Okay, okay. So we got that. We'll kind of put that in as like an intro. Mm, something up there. And if Okay, then we have this section. So we'll do root vendors file out okay out file and then the vendors. So first of all we need to have like Do I want to do like the C++ where I have it as an arrays and stuff still? You know what? For ease, for ease of, uh, yes. For ease of stuff, I, I am going to continue with that. So to start with, we're going to be adding these things. Oh, right, yeah. First things first is we're going to need this is const expression, standard array, standard string view of like how many, I'm not entirely sure. This will be right lines. Length of vendors. And we'll close up like that. Uh, argument must be strength, not int. String of this. Int to string Python. STR. Thirty-five. Thirty-five vendors. Okay. And it's what? Two spaces? Okay.
one, two, that. Vendor name. Close it up. Comma. One, two, that, and that. Okay. Mm, new line, missing from there. Okay. JND and DX. Not entirely sure on the order of this stuff. Hmm. So we've got the vendors. Next is we'd write enum set declaration. And then we go through the enum sets in order. Uh huh, seventy five. Okay. For enum and enums. Interesting. Do I not have what what do I have for enums? Platforms, okay. Enums. Oh, for item in enums. Wait. Hmm. Okay. These are, are these like, okay, is it because it's considered a key and then I have to say like, this is a string instead? Is that what's going on? Nope.
So in this case, I don't actually know how many I have beforehand. But in this case, I did. Is that what's going on? So just say like what the type is, VK image layout, sets, plus sets. Okay. So I can probably, uh, probably do the same thing here, right? Mm. No, no, no. Tr don't try to change much. Okay. First of all, we say... Okay, and then for each of the values, going to be that way or is it going to be it's going to be this way vk image layout okay line 79 is the issue for this one VK image layout. So where's the XML? Okay, we're in enums. VK image layout. First and last values. I'm trying to access the values. Then this is supposed to be enum. String indices must be. We are on the first one still. Print, uh, enums, enum. Let's do that. What does this look like? Is this what I have to do? Okay, so for value in root enums, enum values. Enum name, enum iterator, string of enum iterator. Then we're going to say, hey, you know, enum
unless there's none to be had. Hmm. Okay, uh, you know, iterator value. Print the value. We get these values. So, <clears throat> all right. It's going to be opening one two. That. Okay. Now I gotta. Oh no! I gotta figure out how to rip all that stuff apart. Mm hmm. Okay, well, yeah. We'll say we do the value for the moment. String of value. We have that. And then be... We'll just say zero for the moment, and then we'd have a file that close up new line. Then at the end, we we're just closing. Yeah, closing bracket that semicolon new line. To do a number of those and then we get to the one that doesn't have any I'm missing it out that do that for the moment to make it a bit easier to read these I need the uh, if multiple or none or whatever. If is instance, do that. I need to do that separately. It'd be like what just value. Not quite. So I opened it up. So I'm at this point again. Right argument must be string, not collections dot order dictionary. For this one? Oh, okay, one line ninety, right? Yeah, I'm line ninety right here. So this is it not a list of Do I, okay, maybe maybe I have this wrong. Uh, 
Okay, um, non type is not iterable. Like this is this would this would be how it works, right? Enum values. If this is an instance of a list, then I go through and do this. Else I do this for the moment. Um Instead, it's just doing it for all of them, ever. So this is not an instance of a list. This is, what is this then? What? This is just a none type. Uh -huh. One. Okay. Okay. So this is just this is just a uh, a thing that does just does not have any. So if. It's just a non type continue. Okay. If is okay, is instance. Must be a type or tuple of types. Is no, um, is none type. Come on, how to test none type if is. If is none. Okay. Kerblamo. Good. Good. Right. What is next on the list of items to do? I mean, there's also, yeah, I gotta figure out the, putting the values in, but the other thing was going to be this, 
at the end, the num value sets. It's around VK geometry type and VX. In this case. There's the V and NVX versions. Perfect. So it is fully backwards compatible. Or it will be. Enum <clears throat> pointer array. At this point, we'd have to do out file dot write. Okay, no, I actually need to do this enum type. That number of types that we have. Closing up num types equals the new line. Okay, now I just need to figure this out. Enums this would be like length of this right must be so string of length which gives me at the bottom 231 types that's a, oh well actually hold on let me double see how many we got in 187 But 201 plus uh, another 30 like duplicates from over the years. That sounds about right. <clears throat> so we can probably work with that. So we've got those. And at the end, we'd have to close it up like this. line and a new line okay and we have to go through these again it's the enum iterator so I'd have to say something along the lines of a number okay Space, space, open up that comma, close it up, comma, string of enum iterator, close that up, comma, string of enum again. Sets, comma, and then it would be the number of values we have. If I can figure that out. I would have had it in here somewhere. 
I've used version Wait, we'll just say zero for the moment. We'll close this up. Close that up. Comma new line. Times a bunch. The number of items that don't actually have any values that we're going to switch out the null pointer instead. Hmm. That's because I disabled one right now, yeah. Okay, so I need to get the I need to get this. The number of items or I also oh, wait hold on I need to do if the number of items I need to get the number of items out <sighs> if okay first of all if this if root Okay, if this root enums enum values is none, then I then I'm not writing that, I'm writing a different thing out. It's gonna be the not it's gonna not gonna be this, it's gonna be just like no pointer. And it'll be zero. It will actually be a literal zero. So that should actually clear up those ones, yeah. That just means, that just leaves me with the thing of trying to figure out the length of that, I think. Yes, okay. Maybe. Nine, three, two, three. Okay, yes, that is correct. Create. Oh, it's just not there. I just don't have it here at all. If it doesn't exist, um, yeah, okay, I guess. Fair enough. Okay, now value. Okay, I need the strip down value and I need to strip down this. 
So how do I do that? Okay. First of all, this one, the value. What can we do? Uh, it will be based on, okay, first of all, we have this. So we got the string. We need to make a, a string of this. So string name equals string of um, iterator. Now what I want to do, I want to go through each character. So can I for char in string name? Can I do that? And just return like straight away. Um, okay, not me greater. VK. Okay, <clears throat> this is good. This is good. This is good. Can I start from one? I want to. I don't want to. Uh, Okay, if character char dot is upper, I believe, then I can, okay. equals negative one. We want to start at negative one because I don't want to count the first, like uh, in like VK image, I don't need the first V, <clears throat> the first one. I want all the other capitalized ones because that'll mean it'll be like a space here, a space here. So I'll be adding two extra characters. So zero, zero, one, two. Yeah, yeah. If that and... Up chars. Plus equal one. Then what I want to do is I want to remove from value. So num to remove. Offset equals length of stream name. Plus up charms. Now what I want to do is I want to do this from like uh, Python substring. Start and end. Start to okay. That offset to the end. Almost one, two. Oh no, no, that doesn't mean. Okay, we do want to start at zero because we need to the stuff just afterwards. The one that'll be after that between. Okay, much nicer. A B. So if we go find the social sets, I didn't. I did. Ah, identity zero one RGBA. Wonderful sampler text it should basically be. Nice. Uh, VK result. Okay, VK result is something I don't really want to have here. Skip. Skip VK result. Continue there. We want to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, great. Crap. Okay, call mode bit sets isn't working out very well, is it? Call mode bit flags. Okay, hold on. 
flag bit sets. Is a bit different. I'm going to have to Vulcan 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 Core pin that find that VK <clears throat> VK call mode. Okay, so if we have flag bits, I want to reverse two again. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. Four, five. Okay, what's back? Interesting. So the <clears throat> the regular enums is fine. It's the bit flag ones. Because they have bit on the end. Ooh, sometimes they have bit on the end. Okay, parse. Uh, sorry, Python string end. I'm just relearning the exact same thing I learned a year and a half ago with these. If ends with okay, not all this. Okay, let's re let's rework this. Offset equals zero. Starts off with that. Equals string name or length of string name. If we have, if we go through string name and we have any outbursts, we increase it, but we also want to decrease it. If name dot ends with flag bits minus equals what one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten from the offsets like that right not quite, oh yeah, offset. Don't count the flag bits if it ends with it. Do, 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 do. Okay. So here we go on this one again. Flag bits, none, front bit, back bit, front and back. Okay. Now we want to remove uh, bit. Right? Bit, 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 bit. Front, back, yeah. If string of value dot ends with underscore bit else that Would it be okay? Python substring. I gotta re re um, research that. Start and step. 
terminating index of the substring. The character at this index is not included in the substring. Okay. So it'll be string length minus four. Ah, uh, no. Oh, no, no. Close. It's that minus four. There we go. Front, back. Okay, device local. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need. Is there anything with like an underscore bit in here? Ah, uh, yeah. New. VK, oh, I need to remove that one. Gone. Great. Uh, minus one for that. Okay, let's not actually do this. Let's let's do something different. Results are something we don't even want to have in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the parsing so that if uh, if we have registry node enum if types, we just skip it like API constants. If enum set name equals a result. Continue. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so we're going to rm intermediate. We'll regenerate these. Pause for effect. Okay, there we go again, and then we regenerate the serialization header. Wonderful. We don't have. Uh, sorry, vk result is no longer here. It's is defaulting to 230 correctly. Wonderful. Uh, parse, close that up, generate. Mm, no net, uh, new line on that. Put a line there. All these. Mm -hmm. Viv, VSI, Kazan, Coldplay. One, two, three. Okay, so there's been new ones, yes. Does this actually mean I could actually start from earlier? The the first one, I believe, was version 72. 72 was the first one that actually had XML. So I could actually do that. I started 90... I can go back to 72. You know what? Let's do that real quick. Go, go. Okay. Uh, what is this? This does. This looks bad. Oh, vendor tags. Vendor tags on the ends of things. No. Hmm. I need to remove vendor tags. NV, NVX. Okay, is there any like mesas? One, two, three. Yeah, these ones are fine. Hmm. Okay. No in one, two, three, four. 
one, two, three. That looks a little incorrect. Oh, but, and yeah, these are capitals, so it's considering those as part of it. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh huh. Is there like a a bit somewhere? Bit chrono. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So it's bit and then extension. Okay. Uh, I just, okay, it's just not even here. Cute. Okay, we're going to do this. We're just going to start with like a bit K H R. So we're going to start with. So we need to go through, we need to find, first of all, Okay, I need to determine vendor tag. Okay, I need to go through for all the vendors. Which are all capitalized as they are up here, like that. So I need roots, vendors. If string name dot ends with string of vendor, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, you know what? Offset is starts uh, starts at zero. We're also going to be removing a couple of items from it, so it's like removing what three two times the vendor length. So length. Uh, so offset minus equals vendor name.
if string name ends with vendor, then we'll set vendor name. If that. Then we go down to here, first of all, and offset equals zero. If, first of all, it starts with uh, this, right? If value if vendor name not equal to that then we need to change the offset back to Minus equals length of vendor name times two. Okay. So this is the one I really want to look at. That. I want to make sure it starts off at the correct location. Moving back the number of times, times two, because they'll always be capitalized. So one, two times four. Okay, these are corrected again. <clears throat> what am I reading here? What ext ITEXT should be inverted. VK conditional rendering. I should have just started there. I have EXT, so that's one, two, three. Six minus that, okay, yeah. Oh, it does, it may not end with, oh my God. <laughs> it may not end with uh, flag bits. Python string contains. Check if it contains. What's is it just like contains? If flag bits in string name Okay. That's better. Now we got, okay, now we gotta do that, those other items again. So we have a vendor name. One, vendor name plus one. So end offset equals that. If vendor name not equal empty, then end offset minus equal Does zero count as the whole thing actually? Uh, length of plus one. Yeah, that's not that's not going to happen. Equals end offset equals what a string.
value string equals this. Minus length of vendor name. Okay, no, nope, nope, no, 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 no. Okay, we, we take care of offset right there. Okay. If it ends with Vendor name. We do this minus length of vendor name plus minus one. Okay. Uh, okay, vendor name not equal, empty, and that, okay, and finally, if it ends with underscore bit, string, Minus four. Okay. Ah. What's this? Okay. Sorry, no, wrong one. It's not here. Uh, let's use a newer one. I presume this will have it. Yeah, okay, what's going on here? VK access to hmm. flag bits to contains. Okay, see, this was actually screwing up my own thing as well. <clears throat> Excellent. I mean, not really, but hey. I'm actually going to have an improved version that's not going to screw up anywhere near as bad. So we've got VK access to. VK access to if it has a number on it. Okay, hold on. How's this? How do these other ones work? They look pretty much bottom of the pipe, right? Yeah. If it begins, if. Valid monochrome 420, 422, 444, 8, 10, 12. Okay, we'll just, if we have to go through the name and see like 4, 4 char in. No, I need to do it here. If that, or otherwise, if char dot is number is char number is digit
So we got for these two. One, two, three, plus one for a digit. Sorry, where was this? Here it is. Okay. Crap. Okay. Command buffer render pass. VK query scope command buffer. Okay. Crap. If it doesn't match, then what do I do? Command buffer, render pass, command. I can't have empty ones, obviously. Yeah, any other cases of empties? One, two, three, and then the, whatever the hell this is for enco video encode. Really? What are we doing here? I don't even see this whatsoever here. Hmm. So, okay, whatever. I got this case that I got to deal with first, regardless. Okay, um, what? Ah! Like, it works almost, almost all of the time. Except the cases it doesn't. Which is this weird H264 thing, and... All of the H two sixty four ones are just okay. Uh, VK, please tell me you're like version ninety or not in version ninety. You're version two. Mm -hmm. Okay, two sixty four. Let's go. And where do you guys play? Come into play. Types. Okay, great. On um, what's this? This is a structure. Hmm. 
Okay. VK video encode H264 create flag bits. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're just alt irved bit x. Okay. So if I was to do eliminate these ones, getting rid of the vendor name and getting rid of the bit. Uh, here, put it up here. Fault X. Okay. So this would have been fine. So the, these are this this the ending bit is fine. It's the first bit that's the problem again. Me frame a bit extension. So bit. Uh, okay. Vk video encode h two sixty four. output mode that and then we're, then we're also removing an extra two so I can see output mode the H is one is an extra one being removed okay Okay. Special case. H264. If contains. Set minus equal to three for three numbers. Okay. Oh, so close. And then what's going on with you? You have flag bits, so you're so you're down a couple. And the okay, we're we're still down by two. Extension. Extension bit. Those are removed correctly. Capability. What's what's with this? VK video encode H two sixty four. Capability. So this should be right. Pictures only. So I only kind of fix these ones somehow. Or am I missing something else? H264? Doesn't really matter, does it then? These are just worse. Okay, uh, 36 characters, so that's what? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's literally everything except 
That's a bit much. We do offset these ones. Determine if it ends with the vendor tag. If it does, then vendor, na vendor name becomes that, and we remove string name equals. minus uh, the length of the vendor name. If flag bit, if it ends with flag bits now, Minus what? Eight. Like that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Mm, that didn't work out very well. At all. Okay. Let's try this this way. So we're gonna have the same thing again as earlier. For char in string name, because the string names are a lot are now a lot uh, shorter. They're missing the vendor. They're missing the flag bits. If is upper or char dot is length of string name because it's not actually technically the end. Okay.
I'll set minus equals 10. Okay. Then we re-increment it. So that's 8 plus the two capitals. Yes. If is upper, then we increment it like that. Okay. Okay, these ones are correct again. Uh, these ones are not. Okay, pictures only. I need to go back in the history for this one, apparently. 175 through 186. Okay. VK video decode progressive or oh, pictures only. Oh boy. What a joker. Okay, so maybe I should go back to the old way where I would instead build it up from the start and then if it doesn't match just leave it like this it's like yeah because I, I just can't I just can't come up with a good rule set that's going to actually deal with all these weird ass cases that they decided to let in you encode 264 capabilities Capability versus capabilities. Oh, come on. Oh, no, that's why, isn't it? It's capabilities versus capability. Why? That's where the extra characters are coming from. All right, let's do it the other way around. So we'll go like VK video decode. That's what it's going to do. VK flag bits. That's what it's going to look like here. So it'll be removing that, it'll remove that, and this will be the last bit that remains. Remove that, and then maybe it'll remove, like, because we do have bits two, right? So remove, an, okay, remove, remove, ah, remove vendor tag, remove numbers, remove flag bits. That's the order.
Okay. We found the vendor name. Great. We remove the vendor name. Now we need to check if minus one dot is num is it num is digit. Now if it now if it ends if string name dot ends with flag bits minus eight. Okay, we now have this. This is this is what we have. So reconstruct Construct most likely in a prefix where we're going to go through each character. If it's a capital, insert an underscore, then the capital letter. Okay, except for the f except for the first one. They all start with V, though, right? They all they all start with V. I'm just going to assume that. I'm just going to assume that. Um, we can do a special case actually. <clears throat> for char in string name. Equals that if main prefix then main prefix equals char plus equals char. Now if char dot is Upper and main prefix plus equals an underscore and prefix plus equals the char else and prefix so includes the char. If value string dot begins with main prefix, else value string, which is just the regular value, uh, length of main prefix.
start with. Um, plural. Okay. 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 Uh, this looked like it just completely and utterly didn't work. Because okay, what does main prefix look like? String name. Main prefix. Capitalize. Hmm, to upper Python. Just upper. Okay. It would equal that plus Okay, that's just them um, making a mistake. I can accept that. Okay, this is a fun one. If if um, type digit not in then what I can do is I can add whatever Whatever it was, name prefix plus equals type digit. Like that. That clears that one up. Oh, that clears up all the, like, so until one day when there are 10 versions of the same enum type, then I'll have to worry. However, for the moment, I can live with that one. Now this is good. Quebec. This one is good. This one's good. This one's good. This one's good. This one is video decode H264 progress. What were you guys doing? Oh, this is the one that's not even here. This is also the other one that's 
just using a completely different prefix. Not much I can do that about that, but if it's literally only like the one prefix for the H264, uh, if it's just for that one set, I will let that slide. Because otherwise I've got everything else. Yeah, okay. Query scope, because that used to be called something else. Everything else is fine. I will take that as a massive win. Okay, we got rid of the decay result. That's great. Uh, I also want to actually trash. I was going to trash something else in here. Decay power stock. Struct types, right? Now, do I want to trash it here? Yeah. Okay, uh, now I need to provide the actual values to these. So starting with values should be easy. Here. Now if If enum values value, uh, yeah, okay. What is it? It's is it like alias? Is it the alias key? Then the the value. Okay, if a value key in that, then we've got that's what we're going to put out. Oh, file. Right. Even values value value. Otherwise, we'll just put that out. Great. A uh, bunch of Fs and zero. Don't want that. So we've got some you know, values going in. So the so that would have been the zero. These one ones would would uh, be bit or alias. Right. Value of zero, bit but yeah. Elif bit position in enum and value bit flag. How am I going to get this to print out nicely? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that one didn't work really well. 
Um, clear that out. Okay, let's try this other format. Let's say 15 for an F, 0, 8, X for capitalized, or is X? I don't know. Okay, 0, F. Okay, we can capitalize it with that. Okay. Great. If we do right lines, zero x that, then the format, then we then we can close it up, and then we can do one shifted over by how many times? Bit position. Int and string. Okay. That's looking pretty okay. Let's find something with a fairly heavy set of flags, such as this one. All commands, go. 8,000, 10,000, 4,000, okay. All the way down to the one, two, four, eight, ten, twenty. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a bit flex. Now I need to do the other case, which is when we have alias. So we'll have that, an empty space, and then the close, right? Yes. That is an alias for something else. Hmm. So then instead we set value equal to num value alias and then we just redo, re redo the same thing. So it'll be 03. We just do these two again. Yes! Okay, aliases work now. Great. Let's check the other alias. Um, under this, we have... Ah, uh, I, what? This, there's, it's a 60, this is supposed to be 64-bit based? I thought this was all 32-bit based. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I, yeah, that's right. Okay, hold up. Uh, transfer. One is the same as old transfer, which is 12. Yeah, okay. Oh, crap. When I did this, I actually completely reset it. Okay, so I'm actually going to fix that right now, if I can. Because, okay, Vulcan Core. This. Right. Oh, no. 
it's a completely different thing. Why? These are completely different const types. Why? DK flags sixty four. All right. A brand new type just for these. The VK flags is that, and the original VK flags is just a thirty two bit type, right? Be declared at the very you were thirty two. Okay. Okay, well, I'm. this is a rare operation. I'm only doing serialization very rarely, like once, twice an application. So it being a bit slower doing conversions between 64 and 32-bit, I'm not really going to be too bothered about. So let's update this, this to int 64. Okay, okay, we all happy, we all happy. We can support these massive numbers up to like however much this is, 38 bits. How on earth did they even, like bit width equals 64? Okay, and then they actually specify that now as well. Hmm. Can't wait till they hit that uh, barrier as well in a few years. Okay. Where am I? So, I've got basically all of these in place. Now I need to bring the functions over, add some documentation, and just start using it, I guess. Wait. Oh, it's a type that goes back into another type? Or wait, hold on. These are extensions or features that I'm not even covering yet. Ah, beautiful. And how's that? How's how's that look here? It's just part of it. Extensions. Wait, no, this is structure type. Wait, I don't care about structure type. What am I doing here? I did I not change? I just probably didn't regenerate. Uh, whoops. Regenerate them. Getting rid of the structure type set. Don't actually, don't actually care about that. That's why I missed it. Don't regenerate the serialization header. Then. Add the other stuff surrounding it.
One, two, three. Go back down there, great. Vendor and vendors, okay. So we got Okay, why is this one still here? You're supposed to skip it. Structure type. Unless, oh, I because I didn't delete it before I remade them. So it's still hanging on in there from the previous time. There it is, it's gone. Okay, let's finish these up a little bit. So we've got to, we'll have a new line and a new line on these things. Like that. What else we got? We got it. We'd have functions be here. Okay, we'll just do a copy paste job of those then. Um, can I just like Python? Copy paste file kind of thing. No, it's just copy file. Not really what I'm looking for. Um, Python multi-line string. Triple. Mm -hmm. We've got a bunch of stuff down at the bottom there. Great. So let's see what we can do about the top stuff. that stuff, then we have def that stuff. Then we have 
have the functions. Expected indent on line one sixty four. Really? Is it supposed to be like expecting this? Oh, uh, no, it's this. Line five, nine, five, line one twenty four. Capital F, test HPP. Okay, we got all of this stuff again. So, that's this stuff. the old engine what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it in here see if I can just do a drop in just like that nope closing brace we've got an extra closing oh I used to have namespace uh, empty namespace Okay, assuming we don't have an empty namespace. We appear to compile fine, but does everything else work fine? Apparently it does appear to do so. So that'd be, what, what is that, like one file, <clears throat> that was a test HPP. Uh, 73 kilobytes compared to like the 50, Detail value serialization, 54 times 100 and something odd. Yeah, that does make a lot more sense to me. I can also close the pins now. And then from here, what can I do? From here, I could probably expand it out to doing the others as well. Now, not really. Do I want to actually replace this? I mean, like, this is all the old. Maybe I'll have to make a Vulcan Mini Libs 2 version, which is just single headers instead of per version headers, which would make more sense. It'll be easier. It'll be sm smaller. Smaller. Because I think, um, like the Git, yeah, the Git repository size is 33 megabytes from all those duplicate headers. And if I just do another one fresh, it'll be practically nothing. 
way cheaper to import. And far more useful moving forward. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to make another one. A B R A B. Okay. So I've got a new directory. Now I need to copy over a few items from the original. So I'm going to be taking over the Python files, the generate. Do I want CMake? No. Readme, yes. License, yes. Mm, that's all I can see, really. Paste them here. Uh, oh, show hidden files. Git ignore. GitLab CI. Copy those. Paste them here. Okay. Let's see if I can do that. All right. Vulcan docs. We got this. We'll have an include directory. We're going to start at 72. We're going to remove the things we're not using. Get rid of these. We don't have these anymore. Don't do any of this either. We go through, we do all that. So I'm going to do generate. Python is going to start at Input, so it's not going to be um, we, okay. We're going to push D into this. I want to pop back out. XML data, back out. XML, okay. It's going to be specifically right here, and then it's going to be output into include. Like that. See if we can do that. Readme is, of course, yeah, okay, we'll figure that out in a second. Generate sh. It's much faster processing all these. I'll give it that. Gonna be this year twenty twenty one. We'll ignore that file.
two. It'll be two on GitHub as well. Hmm. Need to trash that. I don't need two of them. that up just a little bit and can be found Okay, do I want to include the example string parsing? Okay, yeah, and the test, right? I do have test. So I can still include C++ through that. No, not here. Okay, we don't have any of that. We just have... We'll test build examples. Yeah, I guess. GCC and Fedora. Also add Arch. VK serialization tests. That's what we're doing what we have Oh, standalone work. Okay. Put these in tools. Which means you also clear that one up. You also clear that up. So and it'll be here, it'll be here, that'll still be that. And instead it'll be back like that.
I've got an extra namespace still hanging about. I need to, uh, how did I do this? It was just after these. So in number value, okay. Another new line, we'll put that, and then a new line there. Do this again. I do, yeah. Uh, initial Actually, that's something I want to try to do, first of all. Tools. Let's say I do generate OSH and I end at 130. All right. What does it look like when I add more items on? I just want to make sure like it's going to be in the same uh, style, basically. And I've expanded it from 90 down to 72. So... Oh, I need to, yeah, okay, when I'm doing generate, I need to clear out. Generation cash. I'll call it something like that instead. Gen cash. It's the gen cash. For that, then we go that.
Okay, gen cache is the thing I want to remove, not intermediate. We're doing it for the whole the whole thing. Now the reason I also I also added all like the the first and last times things were seen is that like eventually I want to also add the ability to say like if it's you know if this is from if if a type has been phased out or deprecated I want to say like this version last seen in version whatever or was first seen in version whatever if it's a newer thing even if I don't quite have that yet okay could ignore that that should make that one go away and then that should leave this one so yeah slightly less vendors we added some vendors in the meantime we remove this is missing it's just moved around No big deal. Non front, back, front and back. Non front, back, front and back. Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. It's been moved down. So the old version does still exist at the same time as the new version, which is what I was looking for binary timeline and any yeah they both still exist even if they moved around there they do exist so if you have an older version built around the older types you can still use this or oh, well that's the idea it's been shifted around for some reason. Okay, I've still got like an EXT here and an NVX. Hmm. Um, I think I'll let it slide for this one. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. There have just been a bunch. 172 to 229 in the past 50 versions. Ooh. But all in all, is all contained in one 2,300 line file. I like. Why is it taking so long, Jen? Just rid, rid of all XML files. Oh, yes, I need to uh, update the README. I don't have a lot of these things anymore. I only really have value serialization. VK quality checks are gone. Okay, can I change this? Get a GitHub one. Okay, it just doesn't.
Okay, quality checks. Vulcan error code, not here. Vulcan value serialization. Does not use that anymore. Dash two. Oh. Solid date. Okay. Um, put that up. Okay. And then I guess I'll call it job well done for this one. That only took way too long. All right. Cheers. <laughs>